Hi there, welcome back. Um, Cheapers, we are one year into lockdown now, and so this is probably post number 70 of these reflections. I was at lunch with a great friend uh, yesterday, and um, on the wall of their playroom was this amazing photograph. It was a meter long panorama style view of 21 men standing shoulder to shoulder. 18 of them were kitted uh, in football boots and springbok blazers. It was a photograph of the 1947 tour to Australia and New Zealand. And in amongst it was her grandfather, Mr. R. E. Ferryman. As I scanned this photograph, I noticed and recognized immediately another name, uh, Sid O'Lynn. And with almost simultaneous effect, I recognized the face as the face of his son, Paul, who I have played countless hours of sport with over the years and who still today remains one of my closest friends. Um, the achievements of Sid O'Lynn could take up this entire reflection and more. Um, and, and I heard many of these during the course of my life, but not one of them uh, from his own mouth. He was a humble man. He was a double springbok. He played cricket and South Africa, uh, sorry, cricket and football for South Africa. Uh, and he played for 10 years for Charlton Athletic at high quality British league football. Um, there's a story that he batted once for 326 minutes against England. He scored 98 and was deprived of his century by a flying catch from Colin Cowdery. Um, Wisdom, <clears throat> John Arlott from Wisdom described him uh, as showing immense guts unending patience and an almost scientific understanding of his own limitations. Uh, Peter, Peter Pollock described him as dogged and determined. In another word, grit. And the stories of that South African football tour, I'm sure are written up in many places and would make fascinating reading. But the statistics and one glance at Wikipedia make for some astounding reflection. They played 26 games on that tour. They won 23. They lost one. They drew two. They scored 133 goals for and only allowed 44 against. This included a test win series against Australia uh, and a whitewash of the all whites New Zealand team. And remember that these were much tougher times. Leaving Durban on an unconverted 7,000 troop a ton troop ship. Uh, they made their way across to Australia and they traveled with 600 alien immigrants looking to settle in, in the Antipodes. Um, the accommodation was atrocious. Seven men per room, no beds uh, while they were on tour as well. While the Australian teams flew from destination to destination, they took the train uh, and the refereeing was uh, I guess politely described as home ground. Interestingly, the only person who complained was their manager and the rest of the team distanced themselves from his opinion. Uh, it is not true that they received no help. They got football boots and training shoes sponsored and United Tobacco Corporation also supplied them with cigarettes for the whole tour. But in general, they received so little, three pounds a week, uh, while their opponents were earning 12 pounds a match and all their expenses were paid for as well. This week, our national football team, Bafana Bafana, bowed out, or may, maybe I, my misogynistic self would say curtsied out, but that would be a, an insult to the women's leagues of both our cricketers and footballers who've really stood up recently and showed some gumption. But perhaps like the 1947 touring Springboks, with a character shown by 19-year-old Sid Alin, our men's football team might remember that they are playing first and foremost as ambassadors and not as spoiled sportsmen, handsomely paid to complain their way out of ineptitude and into comfort of mediocrity. And in all things, it would pay to show some grit. I hope we all show some grit in this next stage of our lockdown in 2021. Have a great week ahead.